Our architecture being this beautiful intersection of sort of art and science has two components. We have the creative intuitive side and we have the building performance side. As a student, when we went to design school, most designers went to school to study the creativity side of design. Nobody went to architecture school to fill in paperwork. Today, designers are spending a lot of time manually creating design options. And AI, machine learning, general design, all these different technologies provide us with the possibility of making that process faster and more efficient. The opportunity to not have to start from scratch again. AI machine learning tries to get the computer to learn from past behavior. And in our case, that is data. So in the context of architecture and engineering, you can start feeding in documents to understand what is contained within those documents and have the machine make decisions for you faster based on the historical context. Google Maps is actually a really good example of machine learning. You get like traffic when we should leave an estimated time, even for a trip that you're trying to take 10 days from now. It'll estimate based off of previous traffic patterns, past data. So if you can imagine your life before Google Maps, we use it and now we can't live without it. It made our lives easier and made it so that we have a lot more information so that we can make better decisions in the moment. Data is going to be that for design and construction. In generative design, what you do instead of designing a building in a linear process is you define the boundaries, you design the actual sort of metrics of the building. And within that space, you can birth a whole series of different designs and then rank them against each other. So that customers have the opportunity to see a whole bunch of different design options that can help them quickly narrow down their problem spaces faster. And this can benefit everybody, not just the designer. If you start building in some of these metrics at the start of your design, then the building owner can start making more informed decisions and understand the outcomes faster. It also helps the environment and benefits when you start building in the understanding of materiality and cost and potentially how far away this material has to travel to get to your site, into this algorithm at the outset. They have outcomes that they want to get to and they have the data. If you pair that with a generative design approach, then you can have a very powerful system that would be really beneficial in trying to build the optimal solution for their buildings. Generative design is this beautiful symbiosis between man and machine. You have the human component at the front end making all the decisions and setting what they actually want to get as an outcome. You have them also at the tail end of the process where they evaluate those outcomes from the generative design process and choose the one that best fits. So the context here is AI machine learning is is around making decisions from the past. Generative design is around birthing visions of the future. The bottom line here is what we're trying to do really is give more time back to the designer. And so what generative design does is it enables you to build an algorithm that starts to understand both art and science. So all of the boring mundane tasks can start being taken away by the machine. Things around compliance, you know, does the fire egress drawings work correctly? Is my building going to stand up? All of these different kind of things a machine can actually do very, very well. And this is what we want to shift using generative design and AI ML. We want to have humans doing what is really good for humans and the things that we enjoy doing from a design perspective perspective and take away some of the grunt work or the mundane work.